日本史学習に最高にもってこいのサイトサムライアーカイブスポッドキャストへようこそ美しい自然にあふれてる縄文時代から波乱万丈な幕末まで全時代を網羅して日本史の隅から隅まで一緒に語り合いましょうでは早速日本史の世界へレッツゴー Hey everybody, welcome back to the Podcast. This is Chris, and today I'll be talking with Dr. Travis Seifman about the burning of Shuri Castle in Okinawa. So, for anyone who isn't aware, Shuri Castle burned down at the end of October 2019. So, I'll be talking to Dr. Seifman about the buildings that burned, the things that were lost, and sort of all the, the cultural issues therein. And before we get started, if you'd like to support the podcast, please go to patreon.com slash samurai archives to see what you can do to help us out. Also, just a side note, I know I promised part two of the Date Masamune podcast here, but、uh, it'll actually be probably later in the year before I'm actually able to get to that. So I'll have a few other episodes for you in the meantime. Okay, so let's get started. So, everyone in Japan woke up on、uh, October 31st, 2019, to hear news that、uh, Shuri Castle, the, the royal palace, the former Uh, royal palace of the Ryukyu kingdom had,、uh, was on fire, that a fire had, bur- had broken out、um, at Shuri Castle. And we later learned you know, a little bit more details that the fire had started around two in the morning, and by, if I remember correctly, by noon or 1 p.m. ish,、um, they still hadn't fully finished、uh, putting it out. But in the end, the six most major, most central buildings. Um, in the castle complex, had,、um, had, had burned down. So, we can get into a little bit more details later about exactly which buildings、uh, they were and stuff like this. But、um, I guess the, the overall the overview to say is that Shuri Castle or Shuri Jo or Sui Gusuku was the royal palace, the,、uh, the royal residence, and also the, the main you know, center of administration. For the Ryukyu Kingdom, the Okinawan Kingdom, from roughly sometime in the 15th or 16th century up until the overthrow of the kingdom in the 1870s. And yeah, when, 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 Meiji, yeah, when,、um, when the Meiji government uh, overthrew, uh, well, when the Meiji government unilaterally declared that the Ryukyu Kingdom was to be abolished and annexed into Japan,、um, The castle initially became very briefly the headquarters of an、uh, imperial Japanese army、uh, you know, unit, military unit, known as the Kumamoto Garrison. And then after that, I think it continued to be used by the occupation, uh, by, the, by the Japanese、um, you know, occupation forces in one way or another、um, for decades after that, but it, it largely kind of fell into disrepair. By the 1920s.、Um, and it was in the 1920s that actually even Shuri, Shuri City themselves decided they didn't have the money or the resources or whatever to try to keep the castle in repair.、Uh, so Shuri City decided that they were going to just have it knocked down, have it demolished. And it, it was at that point that、um, a few professors from the Tokyo,、um, Tokyo School of Fine Arts, the Tokyo Bijutsu Gakko,、um, stepped in and Acted to, to save the castle、um, as a symbol of Okinawan tradition and art history and so on and so forth. And they had it renamed、uh, Okinawa Shrine, Okinawa Jinja, so that it could be designated a national treasure and, and, and,、um, and, and saved. Well, it seems kind of crazy that they would just casually say, oh, let's just trash it, at least to my 21st century、uh, sensibilities. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's sort of further details to that that I don't, I don't know the precise、uh, you know, situation, but I think I, I can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head, but I, I think, it's, I think it, it happens. You know, when you have a historical site that has just been, it's just fallen into such disrepair for decades, and, and, and it's just, you know, what, do you, what else are you going to do with it? And especially, Given it's a very central location、um, in the city that they could have built 
uh, schools or hospitals or a public park or whatever on that land, um, military base, whatever they, whatever various purposes. Um, and, um, yeah. And I think also just the, um, uh, just the times being what they were, the kingdom was long gone. You know, I'm not sure precisely what people were feeling at that time, but you know, it's sort of, it's a relic of the past and maybe people were just, they, 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 they felt they had no choice, but to move on something like this. I'm, I'm not really positive precisely what the feelings were at that time, but, um, but in any case, just to kind of give the, the rest of the overview, the castle was saved at that time in, in the 1920s. Um, but ultimately, in 1945, the Imperial Japanese Army decided to build um, a military headquarters in the caves under the castle, um, you know, very well defended underground, right? Um, and so when, um, when the Allies, the, the Americans and, and other Allied forces came to, to seize the island of Okinawa as, you know, a key step towards defeating Japan in World War II, um, in the Battle of Okinawa, which ended up being, um, I think, the bloodiest battle of the Pacific War and the only land battle fought on what might be considered Japanese home islands rather than, you know, Japanese colonies. Well, that's obviously a little bit complicated. Um, in any case, in the Battle of Okinawa, in the process of getting at that um, that he headquarters, the castle was just completely shelled, burned, destroyed um, uh, uh, pretty much entirely. And so that was 1945. Um, and then after that, we, we could go into more detail later if we choose to, but, but basically after a long period of various negotiations and difficulties and disagreements and um, conversations about whether or not it should be rebuilt, finally in 1992, so about 47 years after, um, yeah, after its destruction, in 1992, finally the castle was rebuilt um, and open to the public as, as a public park, as a historical site, uh, and so forth. And so then, um, from 1992 onwards, it's become not just the most visited tourist, uh, most visited tourist destination in Okinawa Prefecture, but also um, a site for the performance and kind of revival of Okinawan traditional arts. Uh, not just, uh, uh, they regularly perform Okinawan dance and things like that there, and music, but they also have um, sort of reenactments of royal rituals, royal, uh, royal court ceremonies. And what I hadn't quite thought about, but, you know, what I now realize in the course of kind of researching this a little bit, is that it's not just about the performances, right, the music and dance and so forth, but by having these reenactments and by having the castle itself reconstructed, it produces an opportunity for people to revive traditional Okinawan arts of architecture, carpentry, painting, lacquerware, um, costumes, you know, textiles, um, all, all kinds of different traditional arts, um, you know, in that, in that vein. So um, anyway, it was a, a you know, extremely uh, lively sort of cultural site and the most visited tourist site in the prefecture. And then 27 years, 27 years after the rebuilding, almost exactly to the day, it opened on November 1st, 1992. 27 years later, October 31st, 2019, um, there was this accidental freak fire um, and the all, the all the main central buildings of the castle complex were burned down, um, unfortunately. So there's, there's now... There's now various plans to try to get it rebuilt again, um, and it's they're already underway. And it seems to be there's a lot of um, a lot of money and a lot of political will behind it, so it will get rebuilt. It's just a question of how long it's going to take and in precisely what form and so forth. Yeah, yeah, it's been a been a tough time for castles recently. Kumamoto Castle had the same. Well, it wasn't a fire; that was an earthquake. But they're looking at like uh, I think at this point like another 18 years to kind of get everything squared away. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I guess it just goes to speak to my my ignorance, you know. But the earthquake was a few years ago already, right? It was like three years ago. Yeah. And, and I think that most, if not all, of the castle is still not open to the public. 
Yeah, I was just there uh, last year, and uh, a lot of the castle's inaccessible, and they've built like these massive concrete bridges that you walk over to uh, get to you know some of the inaccessible parts of the castle. But you can no longer actually go through the uh, the tunnels and the the path the normal pathways. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I, you know, I guess it just speaks to my ignorance about how long these kinds of things take, but. Um, I was a little bit surprised that whatever repairs needed to be doing at, at Kumamoto weren't weren't already done. Um, I visited, uh, and and I've heard I've heard completely you know wide ranging um, um, different expectations about when Shurijo is going to be uh, rebuilt, when the reconstruction is going to be completed. So I suppose something like ten years doesn't sound entirely unreasonable. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done, and and you know. But I've heard some people say it might take 30, you know. Um, I guess part of it is also the question of what else might get in the way in the meantime. Um, so, uh, because there there were plans, there was some discussion. I think it got to be a pretty, pretty far, pretty solid discussion to have the castle rebuilt by 1972. So 20 years earlier than it actually was rebuilt uh, following the war. Um 1972 was um, the year that Okinawa was fine that the American military occupation of Okinawa was finally um, given up. So, you know, as as we know, after World War II, uh, uh, all of Japan came under Allied occupation, right, for a certain number of years, and then in 1952, most of Japan, uh, the vast majority of quote unquote mainland Japan was returned to, uh, you know, Japanese rule, to their own sovereignty, um, to administer their own <laughs> people and their own land. Um, and then uh, the people of the Amami, uh, Amami Oshima and sort of the Amami Islands protested and yelled and, 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 and managed to convince the Americans to give back uh, Amami and sort of those surrounding islands in 1953. And the Okinawans also protested but didn't get um, what they wanted for another 20 years. And, you know, the, the American military control of all of Okinawa, the, the placement of all of Okinawa under martial, martial law um, didn't end until 1972. So they were talking about having um, the castle rebuilt in time for 1972 in conjunction with this um, reversion. But in the end, through whatever sort of local politics and, and kind of, I don't know, whatever discussions there may have been between the national government and the Naha City Chamber of Commerce and whoever's different competing interests, um, they ended up doing this uh, Ocean Expo, which um, I don't know if it's well known. I don't know. Have, have you heard about this, Chris, the, the Okinawa Ocean Expo? I think so. Yeah. So 1970, I think, or 1972, they, they had this big I'm not sure if it quite counted as a World's Fair or if it was just a domestic thing, but it was this big ocean-themed expo, Kaio Hakurankai, and they held it in a, a park um, up near Nago in, in northern Okinawa, um, which is now Ocean Expo Park, and it has the uh, Shura Umi Aquarium and so on ah, and okay, so yeah. forth. okay, yeah, I am familiar with that. Yeah. And so all the money that was supposed to go into rebuilding the castle suddenly went into organizing this expo. Um, And so they didn't get the castle rebuilt for another 20 years. So, You know, I think it's interesting because I don't think many people realized that it was actually built or rebuilt in 1992. Because, uh, you know, I was there in uh, like April 1995. And I had no idea that I was looking at a two and a half year old castle at that point. In fact, I didn't even really realize it until you mentioned it right around the time of the fire. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I... I never had an opportunity to visit Okinawa until 2008, so it was, you know, kind of well established at that time. I guess um, I can't imagine visiting in '95. That's that's uh, that's sort of an interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, I've got some old pictures of it, but uh, yeah, I, I had no idea that. I mean, I didn't really look into it. I was in college. I didn't really think about it, but I had no idea it was only a two and a half year old castle at that point. Hmm. Yeah, and one thing, um, I don't know if we want to go in this direction uh, immediately right now, but well, I guess I'll say it that. You know, right after, right after the fire happened, um, I think a lot of people's reaction, and I have to admit my reaction also, was, well, you know, it's of course it's still tragic, it's still horrible, but it's 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 a modern building, it's a modern recreation, and so what's you know what's really lost, you know? 
it's not that big of a deal. And I saw I saw this reaction on a lot of sort of professional Japanese history mailing lists and um, and elsewhere. And I actually I learned a little bit too late. I, I wish I had realized it sooner. But the Wikipedia, you know, the, the in the news section on the front page of Wikipedia, there was a discussion going on behind the scenes whether or not the Shuri ca- the, the Shuri Castle fire was newsworthy enough to be put onto that front page of in the news. Hmm. And I didn't realize there was a discussion, so I didn't go and participate at all until it was too late. But within a day or so of the fire happening, the consensus had come to be that because it's such a modern building, it's not newsworthy enough. And so it never actually appeared on that on that front page of, you know, in the news on Wikipedia. Um, but what I learned, you know, very soon afterwards, a few days after the fire, is that even though it was a very new building, um, and even though it could be argued, you know, that it's just a recreation or um, reconstruction or whatever you want to call it, I think a lot of people in Okinawa and a lot of people in the Okinawan diaspora in Hawaii and elsewhere feel extremely strongly about this castle as as a uh, as a symbol of, you know, the greatness of Ryukyu and culture, as a symbol of the power of of you know Ryukyu and of the Ryukyu kingdom itself historically, um, and so Mei Lu has a book called Heritage Politics, which is about sort of the history of the castle over the course of the twentieth century, and then also uh, Gerald Fiegel has a book called Beachheads: War, Peace, and Tourism in Postwar Okinawa, in which he has a chapter about the castle, um, and so reading both of those, and also you know talking to friends and also through other sources. Um, I really came to realize something about the entire process of trying to get the castle rebuilt over the course of the post-war. A lot of people, you know, not not everybody, everybody in Okinawa, there was a lot of disagreement, but some segments of Okinawan uh, uh, society put a lot of emotion and a lot of effort into seeing the castle rebuilt. Um, And in particular, there was this idea that I think in the 70s or maybe I think it was in the 70s, there was this. Uh, what's the word, like a protest, like a, an activism campaign that was pushing the idea that Okinawa's post-war will never be over until the castle was rebuilt. So the idea that Shuri Castle was destroyed in 1945 because of the Japanese. It was Japan's fault that they put a military base there. It was Japan's fault that they organized their you know, wartime strategy to allow Okinawa to become a battlefield to be sort of sacrificed in order to protect mainland Japan. And so because it's Japan's fault, if Japan wants to, if post-war Japan wants to prove that they really do treat Okinawan people and Okinawan land as part of Japan, as sort of equally equal members of the Japanese nation who deserve the sympathy and protection and care of the Japanese government, right? If the Japanese government wants to prove that they actually care about Okinawans as fully equal Japanese citizens, then the Japanese government has to rebuild the castle. Um, And so that emotion is also built into it um, of finally seeing it rebuilt. Um, And so now that it's destroyed uh, again, you know, it's, it's, I think it really is, you know, a major um, um, emotional loss for a lot of people. Well, I think also, uh, and and I know you can speak to this a lot more than I can because uh, I only have a vague understanding of this. But it's my understanding that there were a lot of like cultural artifacts and you know museum pieces and that kind of thing that were lost in the fire. Yes, so that's another piece of it as well. Is that the castle itself that was lost, the 1992 building that was lost, and actually some sections um, were built later, over the course of the 1990s, 2000s, even the 2010s. I mean, it's particularly kind of, I don't know if ironic is uh, an appropriate word or whatever, but, you know, some of the parts that were burned down were actually only finished in 2017, 2018. So now that they finally, finally finished rebuilding that much of the castle, um, it got destroyed. But, um, and, 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 you know, and I just want to kind of touch upon again that as new as the buildings were, they represent... um, you know, uh, an incredible amount of money in terms of traditional materials and so on and so forth, you know, an incredible amount of man hours of producing the, the lacquer wares and the 
roof tiles and all this kind of stuff. So, but so you know that's definitely the idea of the castle itself as a museum piece, as an artifact, as a, you know, is definitely a big deal. But at the same time, as you mentioned, there's about fifteen hundred artifacts that were held at the castle. Um, you know, original, historical, irreplaceable artifacts. Um, out of those fifteen hundred, I think, I don't know, um, maybe. 50 to 100 are modern modern reproductions um, and the rest are you know original objects and out of those 1500 objects four, 400 were lost in the fire so that's most most of what was lost in the fire was um, lacquerwares and ceramics which it's a terrible loss that those were lost um, in a certain sense we're fortunate if that's the right way to put it that you know, um, there were not more paintings, more documents lost. Um, of course, you know, each individual ceramic work and, and, and lacquerware work is, of course, an individual irreplaceable treasure. But at the same time, you know, we have uh, surviving examples of this style or that style of, you know, ceramic or whatever. Um, uh, fortunately, you know, all the most important objects and national treasures and important cultural properties and other things like that. Um, uh, all the most, yeah, I guess for lack of a better word, the most important or the most prized treasures of Okinawan cultural history um, uh, 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 all survived intact. They were either at other museums to begin with or they were, you know, held inside the castle's um, um, storage, proper museum quality um, storage rooms. But of roughly 400 objects that were either on display in the galleries or were somehow otherwise um, not in proper storage at the moment, um, were lost. Um, and yeah, and you know, and some of those, like I said, some of those include reproductions, modern reproductions. So in a certain sense, uh, maybe it's not quite as much of a loss, you know, but it it's. The process of rebuilding the castle is going to involve not just the buildings themselves, but then also, just as it was in 92, we have to do it all over again now, recreating the king's, you know, the king's lacquered and gilded throne, recreating these, um, these plaques of uh, Chinese imperial calligraphy that had been given as gifts by, um, by China to the kingdom, um, and... Uh, Lots of other sort of individual objects like that. But, yeah, but I think now that we've talked about some various aspects of the modern history and the significance of the castle today, um, maybe we should jump back and make sure that we touch upon the actual um, sort of pre-modern and, and early modern history of the castle. Um, Let's do it. So it's, um, I just finished reading uh, Gregory Smits's book, Maritime Ryukyu in which he provides just a fascinating sort of revisionist revision of our understandings of pre-modern Okinawan history. And so taking that into account, but also even just what we, what we already, you know, believed, it's, uh, it's very unclear as to when should he, um, it's very unclear as to when exactly should he became sort of the royal capital um, or the ro yeah, the center of royal authority, as opposed to um, Urasoe uh, uh, Ura Castle, um, and it's unclear when Shuri Castle was originally built and what it might have looked like when it when it was originally built. But um, regardless, I think there was probably some kind of political center some kind of fortress or, or something at Shuri in the 14th century, certainly by the 15th century. Some people, I think, probably probably as early as the 1420s, uh, Shohashi, who, uh, according, according to, to the traditional histories, Shohashi was the one who first united Okinawa Island into the quote-unquote Ryukyu kingdom. Um, and I, I think, if I remember correctly, by the 1420s, you know, we can say that he had Shuri as his his base, his center. Um, but it was really somewhere closer to the 1500s, 1500, 1510, um, 1520 maybe, that King Shoshin 
renovated the castle, expanded the castle, redesigned it to be something similar to what to, to, to the form that we we know it as uh, much later. So um, from roughly 1500 onwards, Shitty Castle came to, or at least especially the, the most central building, the Seiden, the, um, the, well, the, main, the main hall, came to resemble this wonderful combination of sort of Japanese Zen architecture styles and Ming, Ming Chinese architectural styles and decoration. So um, I imagine we'll put up at least a one picture or something on the podcast website. But um, for those who are unaware, the main building, the Seiden in, um, of the castle, is, was mostly uh, there's this sort of glorious red vermilion lacquer, just lacquered the entire building um, in, in a bright red with either red or black um, roof tiles, uh, you know, terracotta roof tiles and various kinds of gilding and multicolored dragons and phoenixes and different things painted um, painted on it. So I guess the main thing that I, I should want to say here, um, and we can get into each individual building too, if you'd, if you'd like, I think that could be interesting. But I think the main thing to say here is that starting from around 1500, uh, Ryukyu was very much trying to embrace this idea of being a... Um, a civilized Confucian kingdom, right? A kingdom that um, had taken on Chinese or, or in particular Ming, Ming ideas of what constitutes civilization and sort of upright, cultured, refined, you know, court culture. Um, and so, and this was reflected in the castle itself. It was reflected also in the bureaucratic uh, administrative, you know, administrative structures, and in court music, and in court costumes, and court rituals, and the use of Chinese language in in their you know uh, 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 bureaucratic documents, their documentation, um, and a whole you know bunch of other things, you know, very similar to the way that that the Yamato state, early Japan, sort of took on. Uh, Tang Tang Dynasty ways of doing things in order to build a, a state that operates as a, a a proper civilized state in the East Asian mode in the Chinese mode, right? So uh, Ryukyu, you know, this the 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 architectural design of Shiri Castle was one one key element which the royal court of Ryukyu really used to demonstrate to itself demonstrate to, you know, the Ryukyuan people um, that the ruling family, the ruling uh, lineage was civilized and enlightened and so on and so forth, but all, and also demonstrating the legitimate, legitimacy and, and sort of refinement of, of Ryukyu to both China and Japan in order to sort of maintain a certain degree of respect, right? So, yeah, I mean, the, the castle burned down. Oh, yeah. So the castle burned down a few times over the course of the sort of pre-modern, early modern period, sometimes just by accident, as, as happens, you know, just a fire came, uh, uh, a fire broke out in whatever, for whatever reason that it did, whether it was struck by lightning or whatever it was, different things happened. I think once or twice that was the case. And at least once the fire, the castle burned down because of um, a, a succession dispute, you know, an all out war within Ryukyu. But each time it was rebuilt, and I believe it was rebuilt four times over the course of that pre-modern or early modern period. And this was another sort of argument that I think a lot of people made, you know, in the 20th century is to say that every time the castle was rebuilt in the 1600s and the 1700s, it was rebuilt with the idea that it was still the, the authentic Shuri castle. The new one is still the authentic one. Uh, and that it's not just some kind of, you know, pale shadow of, you know, a, a modern recreation of what used to be, right? Um, and of course, it's easy to say that when you still have a king and you still have a kingdom. To say, well, you know, we still have a kingdom and the king lives there and therefore it is the real castle, right? And once you don't have that anymore, it becomes much easier to... Once, once you don't have a king or a kingdom and also once everything around it has become you know, concrete and steel and sort of the world has changed so much, 
um, it becomes much easier to say, oh, it's just it's just a modern recreation. It's just uh, uh, you know what's that line from Monty Python? Like, uh, oh, it's 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 only a model. <laughs> uh, but but there was some people, uh, many many people, many people in Okinawa who felt that it's not just a recreation. You know, the, the castle that burned down in, 90, in, in the castle that just burned down recently, one that was built in ninety two. Um, a lot of people felt it's not just a recreation; it's a it's a real um, restoration, um, a a revival a, 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 of the of the actual castle, taking the actual castle and bringing it back into existence. And so, uh, I think that that enters into it as well. Um, I guess I could touch upon. The, the the exact buildings that were lost were um, yeah how how extensive was the fire because I mean it's been what God a uh, twenty something years since I've been there I I barely remember it I, I remember the the uh, the main keep I guess you'd call it but aside from that I really don't remember much of it hmm. yeah and, and I think I think a few more buildings may have been um, uh, added may have been restored since you've been there hmm. um, so. I guess I'll, I'll kind of give like a, a, a brief kind of rundown. When you first approach the castle, um, if you're approaching it from the, the main gate, from the main entrance, um, you first come across the Shuremon, uh, which was the first thing to be rebuilt. It was rebuilt in, in 1952. Um, and it's this Chinese-style gate, very similar to what you might see in Chinatown and various Chinatowns around the world. Um, the Shuremon, which is a very you know, iconic symbol of Okinawa still today, they, you know, it, it was on the 2,000 yen bill, um, and so on and so forth. And it has this plaque up over the gate that says uh, Shure no Kuni, um, a country that observes propriety or something like that, a country that um, uh, always does what's what's proper and appropriate, right? Shure no Mon. Um, and then you enter the Shure Mon, um, and to the left is this uh, uh, sort of ruined but restored, but still kind of in ruins, uh, stone gate of Son- Sonohyan Utaki, um, which is one of the main sort of sacred sites within the castle that the king would visit to pray for the well-being of the kingdom and so on and so forth. Um, so you have the stone gate leading into a, a royal sacred grove on the left. And on the right, I think they've just re- just put these back up. And maybe Maybe I'm misremembering, but... I think it was under construction for quite a few years, but even despite the fire, um, they've now put up these um, ste- uh, these two steely, these two, these two sort of stone monuments just to the right of the Shredemon, um, which are sort of recreations of 16th century stone monuments talking about um, the establishment of, of roads by, Sh- by King Shoshin and, and other sort of accomplishments of, of the king. Um, and all of this part, the Shuremon and so on, was untouched by the fire, sort of out, uh, kind of outer parts of the castle. So you continue your way up into what's called the, Kan- the Kankaimon, the Gate of Welcoming. Uh, and now we're really kind of entering into the, the stone walls. Um, I guess, I don't know if you'd call it the... I guess if, if we were in mainland Japan, we might be calling this like the San Nomaru or something, like this, the third... The third mm. bailey or like the third set of uh, kind of the outermost set of walls mm-hmm. but anyway the kankaimon was also untouched by the fire you enter in the in here you make a right turn you go up these big steps which are are flanked by uh, additional sort of monuments to the to the various past kings and up into the next gate you go up these big steps through the zui senmon um and then another turn, and you get to the Rokokumon, and both of these are, are sort of wooden gates, uh, lacquered in red, sort of Chinese-style gates. And both of these areas were also, you know, a little bit further outside, uh, not affected by the fire. But once you get into, once you enter the, the Rokokumon, you get into, again, what I guess, I guess I would still call it like the third area. Um, so we're still a little bit outside the main areas of the castle. Um, and it's here that they used to have um, a, wa- a water clock, 
which I don't, I don't know off, off the top of my head exactly how that functions, but some kind of water clock, uh, a, a roll cooker, um, that would help, you know, uh, uh, keep time and, and, you know, allow the kingdom to know what time it was. And they also hung um, the, very, the famous uh, Bridge of Nations bell was also hung here. Um, and at this point, you can finally, you can see now a little bit of the, of, of the results of the fire, the ruins of what's been burned down and so forth. We, we make a right and enter into the Kofukumon, um, which is another, you know, giant red gate. And now we're in the, the Shicha, Shicha no Una, which in Japanese would be something like Shita no Oniwa, so the, the secondary plaza, the secondary, if you want to translate uh, uh, not, Niwa as garden, but the, the sort of the second, the second bailey, I guess you'd say, the Ninomaru kind of area. Yeah, I was going to say Okinawan language is so odd. <laughs> when I was in Japan, uh, I had a lot of Okinawan friends and they would speak Okinawan and I had, I had no idea what they were talking about. I love it. I, I think, you know, when you get into full sentences and, and full paragraphs, I, it absolutely is, um, you know, impossible to understand. It's, 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 it's a different language. Um, but I, I think it's really interesting and kind of fun the way that, you know, once you understand the way that, that individual sounds kind of shift. Mm. And so, you know, shita becomes shicha and oniwa becomes una. Then, you know, there's a relation. It's, it's not completely, out, uh, it's not completely out there. It's, it's, there's a relation there, right? O, yeah, oni, yeah. Oniwa becomes una'a. And so you can kind of see where it's coming from. Mm. Um, uh, but uh, much easier to do, I think, when it's written than when you're just listening to a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that's it for this episode of the Samurai Archives podcast. Thanks for listening. And again, if you'd like to support the podcast, please check out patreon.com slash samurai archives. So with that, we'll see you next time. <laughs>